<laughs> Holy crow. Where are you? I'm I'm based here in uh, New Zealand and Auckland. Ah, okay. So quite early for me. Yeah. All right, all right. So it's already 9 a.m. So at this point forward, I'll be muting all the participants so that um, we, we won't have the accident of unmuting ourselves during the talk. So all right. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keja Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I'm super excited to have a beautiful and amazing speaker for today, Kathy Byrne. So Kathy will discuss Organize Your Way to Success. But before she comes to our virtual stage to give her talk, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, Entrepreneurs International Network is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education, networking sessions during our Q&A, and gratitude circles where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. And we also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. So to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and find Entrepreneurs International Network to get access to a lot of pieces of information. And um, if you go to our official website, that is eintalks.com, you'll be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you'll be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to more. So today's event will run for uh, an hour and 30 minutes. We'll have our speaker give her talk for 45 minutes. And then after that, we'll have a 15 minute question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by uh, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. And I'll just uh, put in the link below for um, the uh, app uh, link so that you can download it later and with that let's go to our amazing speaker for today kathy burns so kathy burns is cpo is a board certified professional organizer and image consultant as the founder of organized and energized.com her mission for almost two decades has been to end the feeling of overwhelm and to energize and transform lives by creating systems people can stick to and so I'm so excited to have Kathy on our stage to share with us her amazing talk and how we can benefit organizing our way to success in our business. Kathy, the stage is all yours. Thank you very much. It's really good to see you all. I know that some people is super early in the morning and uh, for others in this 9 a.m. I'm in San Diego and it's it's early enough for me. Um, I love to start my day at like 930 or 10, quite honestly. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, share my screen here. Does everyone see the screen okay? Awesome. So today I'm just going to talk about how to alleviate the chaos in your life. And what that does is that ignites your profits and ignites your bank account and gives you more time to do more things uh, more effectively and just make more money. So we're going to jump into it. How many of you like cookies? Put in chat what your favorite cookie is, if you even like cookies. Um, I personally love chocolate chip cookies. And I'm going to see here if I can see the chat screen here. Hold on a minute. Let me get my chat going on. Well, I like uh, peanut butter shortbread, yeah, chocolate chip. You know, chocolate chip is called the American standard. That's like the ideal cookie. I love peanut, I love shortbread too, Jerry. Oh my gosh, I love shortbread. I like the gooey, chewy peanut butter ones, not the crispy ones, you know, not the hard ones, but the ones that are really chewy. And um, it's really funny because uh, cookies have a lot to do with the way that I organize. And I'll get back to that in a little bit. But first, I'd like to tell you a little story. Last year, I jumped on a horse 
and it took off at a full gallop and it was running straight towards the vertical side of a mountain and right and i couldn't rein him in he was just like going 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 and right before we hit he stopped i go flying off now interestingly i've fallen off a bunch of stuff four-legged things two-wheeled things uh two two-legged things <laughs> and i'm a really good tumbler so i didn't get hurt but what it meant what happened is i realized that you know I don't know what I don't know. I, I used to, I had a horse when I was little and I grew up with horses and I thought that I could tell a horse by his color, but no, um, I know now that I definitely cannot tell a horse by his color. And this incident maybe started thinking about being spontaneous and doing spontaneous actions. And then I started thinking, well, how often have I made a snap judgment like that? and almost quickly fall off the horse of my business? Or how did I almost fail because I wasn't really planning in advance? And then I realized that, you know, sometimes just a little bit of planning can keep you from being thrown off the horse. And it does pay to plan before you start to experience things. So here's the thing, we don't know what we don't know, right? Well, I get back to the stable. I found out, guess what my horse's name was? Loco, i.e. Spanish for crazy. Now, if I would have known that in advance, it would have been a little bit different of a ride. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to break and just tell you a little bit about my background, just so you know where I'm coming from. So I've, I've had 13 different careers. I love to explore. I love to do things. I started out, I was an uh, ocean operator. I, I delivered sailboats. I was a captain and I lived out of a duffel bag for a long time. And I learned how to live really small during that time. After that, I hit land and I became a travel writer. And again, I was traveling, living out of a suitcase. So I realized then that, you know, the things that you need in life that you think are essential really aren't that essential. And I think that was the beginning of kind of feeling like, oh, okay, I know what it means to live minimal. I know what's important in life. And this kind of set the stage uh, for becoming what I became. After I was a travel writer, I started a publishing agency and I had contracts with Omnis and Marriott's all across the U.S. and then 9-11 hit. And all of my contracts went on hold. They didn't cancel, which was a sad thing. They kind of went on hold and they never came back. Now, for me, 9-11 was a turning point and it was actually a blessing to disguise for me because I had time to figure out what I really should be doing in life. Up until then, having all these careers, I was like, I know I'm not really doing what I should be doing. Uh, what is it I should be doing? And actually with cease and desist on all the contracts, I actually had time <laughs> to do it. We held on for about a year as a publishing agency, my, my husband and I, and then we just had to stop. And uh, we decided, my husband made a deal with me. Hey, if you'll take, if I'll take a real job working for the man. If we move to California, you can have a year off to reinvent yourself. So I did, I went into a lot of uh, deep thought about, you know, what do I love? What, what am I good at? Right. And I realized that I like change. <laughs> Duh. 13 careers later. Yeah. Sometimes it takes, uh, you know, someone to figure out it takes, it takes perspective. And that's what I had. So, uh, shortly 10 months into my one year off, I started my company on $49 cause we were pretty much broke. So what happened was I was so excited about starting this new career that I just started writing and creating information and writing reports and sending out books and, you know, putting together all these things. And, but I hadn't planned, I hadn't planned how my people were going to digest them, how I was even going to market them. I was just so incensed with knowing what I know and getting my information out to the world that I didn't really plan any of that. And, you know, I could have saved a lot of time and a bunch of effort if I had planned in advance what I was actually doing with all this energy, right? And how I was actually gonna market them. So the beginning of my career is a case in point of why it does pay to plan, pay, <laughs> plan, pay to plan before you go. Yeah, tongue twister. Now I was really focused and uh, whenever I was writing my book, it took me three years to write my book because I was focused and I was stuck in this perfectionism cycle. Um, I'm a wicked editor uh, being a travel writer. You know, I know I can find typos. I didn't want anything to be, I wanted it to be perfect. And I was stuck in the process of writing this book. 
my very first book. And what I found eventually, I just gave up. I've said, this is stupid. And I called in a coach. And, you know, after struggling alone for a while, I'm like, I know something's really not clicking here. And, and I know also that it takes an outside observer to kind of see what's mucking you up, so to speak. Well, so I finally called in the help of a coach to get my book finished. And she immediately saw what the problem was. Number one, perfection is overrated and simply not worth it. You're always going to have maybe one typo in a book. And I was stuck in the muck of my working title because guess what my working title was? Stuck in the muck of your stuff. <laughs> Duh. So after she said, no, 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 it can't be that. It needs to be about mastery. Immediately, it became how to master your muck. All my chapter titles wrote themselves. They were all about mastering your contacts, mastering your schedule, you know, all so on and so forth. And I published a book like six months later. Boom. Why I tell you this is because it does take sometimes an outside person to look into you and say, Okay, this is where you're stuck. And for me, it was perfectionism and a working title. So there you have it. Now, in spite of all my busyness at the beginning of the career and I was doing all this stuff, I was really, truly blessed to be picked up by Good Morning America two years into my job. They allowed me as a successful woman business startup. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And right after that, everybody picked me up, you know, Oprah and Real Simple. And I was in all the magazines. I was a go-to girl for my tips and about how to get organized and how to look your best and so on and so forth. So it was just such a huge blessing uh, to have you know, had that little aha from GMA, right? And then I became one of the world's first board certified professional organizers. And what that meant was um, I was one of a class of 275 people in the world that were board certified, which means that I had to take a code of ethics. I had to take a big exam, so on and so forth. Flash forward about, oh, I don't know, a bunch of years ago, I actually now sit on the board that writes the exam for the BCPO. And I actually help do the statistics and the logistics and the, evaluate the metrics of people who are taking the exam. Now, this is enough about me. I'm not really saying all this to brag. I just know that if you're like me, you want to take the advice of an expert, right? You want to know who you're, who you're listening to. So today, I'm going to show you how to instantly make more money with three proven strategies that will help you make more money without working more hours. And by the end of this, you're going to know exactly how to do this. Now, we only have a short time together, and I wish I could give you tons of details about all three of these aspects, but um, I do want you to stop struggling against the clock, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of thing, um, but we're going to break it down, and I'm going to show you three simple steps that you can take to jettipult your life into more fulfilling, more joyous experience, right? Not getting on that never getting it done stress machine, and in order to save time and make more money with less effort, you need to eliminate the distractions, right? So begin, you're going to eliminate the things that bog you down and, and clutter your environment. And another thing is successful people don't chase squirrels. And I'll get into that in a minute. But, you know, I, I'm a squirrel chaser myself and I have to really rein myself in. Uh, instead, most successful people learn how to laser focus on their most important task. And they also know how to plan their day and their life before it plans them. And when you learn how to eliminate your chaos, you'll be able to streamline your business systems. You'll be able to ignite your focus and overcome your overwhelm. Now type yes in chat if this sounds like something that you'd like to learn. Anybody out there interested? Maybe. Yes. Okay, John. Uh, I know that, you know, it's good. Thanks, Leanne. So uh, another thing I'm going to say is if you stay to the end, I have a, I have some free bonuses that I'm going to give that'll make it way worth your while to hang out with me. And also I'm going to be available to answer any questions that you have, even if it doesn't relate to this situation. You know, I'm just here for you to help you move forward. So here's the thing. When your external environment is cluttered, your headspace is cluttered. Uh, and clearing your clutter always creates a clear headspace. When you have a clear headspace and you can think clearly, you can get more done in less time, okay? And time is finite. That's the one thing that we can't buy back. We can't buy back time for ourselves, uh, but we can become more effective in the amount of time that we have. You know, there's a lot of people out there like, how do they get so much done, right? And a lot of it, I would guarantee, is because they have a really pristine environment where they don't lose focus and they have things that they actually 
you know, focus on and not be distracted. Creating space is also a requirement for change. And, you know, what happened to me when I had that year off, I had that space to allow myself to change. If I wouldn't have had the space and time to have that year off, which I only took 10 months <laughs> being being me, um, I wouldn't have figured out, oh, I love change. This is what I like to do. This is my gift. So sometimes it takes a pause in your life to really see what's clearly in front of you. For me, it totally did take that long. But can you imagine getting your big project done without spending the next year trying to get it done? Right. Did all did, who has a big project out there that just keeps going on and on and on? Maybe you're writing a book, maybe you're doing some big thing, you're coding something, but it just keeps dragging out. I'm going to show you how to eliminate that. Um, so getting getting a clear environment is step one to actually doing that. And imagine what you would do once you get that project done. Uh, what's your you know, what's your partner going to say? What are your kids going to say when you actually say, yeah, I can hang out with you on the weekend? What's your head going to say when you can actually take the weekend off without guilt because you've actually accomplished something really big? It's pretty exciting, right? And the, the one thing I know to be true is that clutter, what I call is muck, is a really powerful saboteur of creative expression. And we're all entrepreneurs here, right? This is an international entrepreneurs group. We all have created something from nothing. We've all created this unique little entity that's our business. And when you have, and because at that point, when you created it, you were cre creatively inspired. You had that motivation and intuition. And this is how my business is going to look for me. Okay. And when you're surrounded by clutter, it's really hard to bring those unique gifts to the world. And, and you might have even forgotten why you're doing your company because you're so, you know, immersed in crap that's not done. Right. So I had a client who cleared her clutter and she published uh, her book in less than a year after she organized her workspace. And you can do this too. You can hit that big project if you know. And I'm going to show you how. My author, Candace. Uh, when she first hired me, she was working from her dining room table like this. Her her office was about 30 feet away from her de from her kitchen table. She was working on the dining room table with a little satchel in her laptop because she couldn't stand going into her, her office because that had eight years of crap in there and she hadn't dealt with it. And so she couldn't, she, she told me, I can't get my creative juices flowing. I cannot write and focus when I'm in this room. So she literally had moved herself out of her office <laughs> because of all the monks she'd accumulated. We worked together and we created all this space in her office. And at the end of that, I'll never forget, she and her sister, she called her sister in to come down who lived like three hours away and said, let's paint the office. It's so beautiful. Let's paint it and groove it up. And then she reported it to me like six months later, she had written her first book and published it. Boom. Now she's prolific. She has three books and she has another title almost ready to publish. And here's the thing, you know, that's writing a book. That's a big thing. But there's always big projects that you have waiting in the wings. And so if you clear your environment, you can actually get to that big project. And can you imagine what that would do for you once you get that big project done? What, what projects are in the wings for you right now? Type in chat what your big thing is that's been dragging ass forever, if there is one. Um, I know, you know, for me, it's like starting a membership. I mean, there's so organizing a seminar, a book and a workshop, unpacking. Okay, Leanne, you must have just moved <laughs> or maybe not. I mean, I have some people who are still unpacking two years later, writing a book. Yeah, Christelle, you know, we all have that thing. And the thing is, this big project is probably what's going to move the needle, even if it's just unpacking. Okay, it's going to move the needle to get you there. Oh, starting a YouTube channel. Yeah, Jerry, excellent. So, you know, oh, decluttering. Okay, yeah, I can help you on that for sure. So, you know, you know, the big one, and I'm going to show you how you can move that needle and get and get past that. And that's just one thing is decluttering. And yeah, accomplishing real time accounting. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you can do that too. So here's the thing, you know, if you declutter, you eliminate the distractions. And I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the average entrepreneur wastes three hours a week trying to find things that they know that they have, but they cannot find. 
Like, where is that missing document? Where is that app? Where is that piece of paper, right? Three hours. I added it up when I did another seminar for another group. It ends up being a month, a year, basically almost a month, a year that you've lost. You've wasted and lost productivity just trying to find crap, right? So, I, you know, I'm not going to go on much more about clutter, but that's just a little aha moment, hopefully for you, that if you want to gain back a month of your life, it does pay to get rid of the pesky piles and the pesky crap that's in your environment. That is a distraction. And once you do that, see, then you know where things are. And then you won't waste three hours a week trying to find things that you know that you have that you cannot own. I wish I had a nickel for every time a client said, where'd that come from? Or where'd I get that? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. That's for you to tell me. And I have zero clue, but now you know where it is and you know whether you need to get rid of it or whether you need to keep it. <laughs> have you ever been captivated watching a squirrel? Now I love squirrels. Uh, I think squirrels are so cute and they're so inventive and I love watching them. And one day I was watching my resident squirrel and she was jumping from branch to branch to branch. And, and I realized that it wasn't like a random thing. She was on the search and the quest for nuts. She had this constant quest. I'm going to find something to eat. And she reminded me at that point of my entrepreneurial client because she was tenacious. She was resourceful. She was always going to get that nut, right? And she was so inventive that she eventually always figured out how to get to my word bird feeder. We had this big whole thing. I'm trying to like gather it so she can't get to the bird feeder. She'd go flying through the air and land on my bird feeder. And even though she couldn't actually couldn't land on my bird feeder, it would shake so much that then she could fall on the ground and she'd catch all the seeds. Now, this is the thing though. She spent so much time trying to gather up all those seeds. If she would have just been looking for the big nuts, she probably would have had a bigger reward. And that's why I say, stop chasing squirrels, you know, stop chasing squirrels. I'm, you know, squirrel, squirrel. And that's what we do as entrepreneurs for sure. Now they're tenacious, okay? But she spent so much time trying to get to the bird feeder. She probably could have found bigger nuts later. And if she would have focused on the prize of what her real instincts were, was gathering for those big nuts. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, squirrels have a dark side. they lose 40% of the nuts that they bury. Yeah. So imagine this little squirrel, she has all these little seeds and, and that's not the nuts, the big nuts that she's burying, she's lost. Now, then I got started thinking, okay, we are entrepreneurial little squirrels ourselves and we're innovative, we're creative, we're doing all the stuff that it takes to build a business, right? But sadly, only 20% of the stuff that we do is effective. So squirrels have one up on us. They're 40% effective and we're only 20% effective. Duh. I'm like, oh boy, this is a very sad thing. I thought 40% was bad, but how would you like to transform? And instead of getting 20% of what you do moves a needle, maybe 25% moves a needle. Maybe 40% of what you do moves the needle towards making the more money and, you know, turning your chaos into cash. Wouldn't we like to be more effective than a squirrel? And when we stop burying our, our important tasks, our big nuts, right, under the facade of busyness, we'll get more done in less time, which improves our bottom line and eliminates our overwhelm. How would you feel if you could stop jumping from branch to branch and stop chasing squirrels? Do you think you'd be able to get more done every day and every week without working longer hours? I'd say, yeah. Yeah, I've proven it to myself because I'm a professional squirrel chaser. <laughs> Would you like to be able to laser, fo laser focus on your more, most important task? You know, you can't make money if you can't focus. And if you keep jumping from branch to branch without a plan in place, you know, you will go off into the ethers and that big project will never get done. It does also pay to, to streamline your systems, right? And it pays to eliminate the piles of clutter and your half-baked nunny systems. I mean, I am a case in point, you know, all the time it's like, oh, here's this new whiz bang thing. Here's this new whiz bang thing and I'll implement it. And then half the time things are fighting against each other in the background of our business. And we don't know because again, we've jumped off to another branch. 
So raise your hand now if you'd like to stop time sucking busyness. Anybody feel like they're stuck in busyness? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm gonna show you a simple way how to do this right now. Now, we don't have a lot of time to dig deep into those other three, but I'm gonna go deep on this planning ahead thing because planning ahead is where it really, really pays off in spades. The single most important tactic you can do is plan your day before it plans you. Now, this tactic of alone is gonna pay off in spades because you'll get more done in less time, you'll be less stressed about things that are not done, and you'll be able to accomplish your big projects. And ironically, the big projects are what make a huge important impact to your bottom line. You know, getting the big promotion, landing that new client, okay? Planning your day and planning your week is the most effective thing you can do. Like Coach Yogi Berra said, you got to be careful if you don't know where you're going because you might not get there. Yeah. Clients in other unforeseen emergencies can take over your peak productivity time if you let them. Just when your business goal is flying out the window, they'll just go flying out the window because you've got some unknown, unforeseen emergency. Just like when I took off on the horse and I didn't take time to plan who the horse was and I ended up galloping towards the straight side of a mountain. These things happen. And as entrepreneurial, these things happen, you know, and you'll find yourself kind of like off into the ethers on some unknown planet. Like maybe it's the World Wide Web or maybe it's a client who sent you off on a mission or maybe it's somebody else's fire that they want you to put out, but it's not your fire. So if you don't have a plan in advance, you'll just react. So you might be thinking, well, this sounds great, Kath. Okay, but how do I actually plan my week before I plan me? Everybody says this, but how do I actually do this? Because it is a thing, like planning before it plans you, right? So it starts with determining your most important task. Okay, and we're going to have a breakout session here in a minute to figure this out. So what are the things that you have to do to do your business? And there's a lot of literally silly things, you know, that you have to do to run your business. We're going to make a list of everything that it takes to run your business. What do you have to do every single week? Then we're going to group them into like with like categories so that you can kind of see, oh, here's a method to what I need to do with my business. And then we're going to create an umbrella of intention for each day of the week. This basically means that from time management, you're chunking your activities that are like with like into segments of time and segments of days for related activities. So here's an example, and we're gonna break out. So start thinking about this. What do I have to do to run my business? You know, And you're gonna make this list and you're gonna merge like with like. Take for instance, administration is you have to do bookkeeping. You have to invoice people and collect money and all that. You have to schedule clients. You need to organize yourself. You need to schedule tasks perhaps with your VA. Uh, you might have to do, write your weekly blog. You're gonna have to start creating videos for your YouTube channel, right? Um, you're going to have to re respond and, and do social media stuff. You're going to have to network. Obviously, you're going to need to see clients. And then when you see clients, you need to work on their projects. And then that big project's there, right? So you're going to divide your task into five buckets. So what I want to do is uh, show you one more thing, and then we're going to break out into your session. Now, why I'm showing you this, this is actually my intention for each week. So Monday is my administration day. That's where I do all my tidying up and do all my little nitty gritty, what I call silly stuff, but it has to be done. Then Tuesday is my big project day. That's when I'm actually tackling, tackling big thought, big projects. Meetings, if I'm going to meet with clients, I try to put them onto a Wednesday and I all my outside things. And that happened because I have a local networking group that I used to go to that met Wednesday mornings. I'm that perfect. I'm already out. I'm already dressed. That's going to be my meeting day. And then I have a marketing day. You know, what's the day when I'm going to pop out all my social media, when I'm going to do my marketing stuff? And then Friday's research day. And that's really critical for me because I'm constantly in training and I always have training and mentors. If I don't set aside a day to actually study what they're telling me to study and implement what they're telling me to implement, I might as well not pay the money to do it. So that's kind of my life and how I have my day set up. Now, what I love about Project Day 
is what I've learned is that it takes four hours, it takes a four hour block of time to get anything majorly done. So if you can schedule four hours every week to do that big thing, okay, whether it's uh, unpacking, whether it's starting a YouTube channel, whether it's doing a website, you know, all the things that you guys were saying that you're going to do, uh, starting YouTube channel, writing your book, organizing a seminar, right, John, or Leanne unpacking, Tamara, you know, writing a book and creating a workshop or Christelle writing your book or Jerry starting your YouTube channel or just decluttering, you know, or Kim accomplishing your real-time accounting, right? If you have a four hours every week that you're going to do that one thing, think about this. That's 20 hours. Well, it's 16 hours a month, maybe 20 on a five-year, on a five-week month that you're going to actually do that big thing. Do you think if you spend 20 hours, 16 to 20 hours, that you would have that thing knocked off in a month or two? I'd say, yeah, absolutely. So this is, this is why I love the project day. Okay. And, you know, scheduling actually four hours a week for your projects is going to do something. It's a minimum magical time. When I work with clients in person, I schedule four hour blocks because I know that it takes, you got to ramp up, you got to get into it, right? Then you start jamming out, you know, out hour one and a quarter, you're really jamming, you know, then you can work really hardcore for a couple hours and then you have a, a finish and a wind down. So the four hours is magic. Um, so I hope this is helping you because what I'd like to do now is take a few minutes to have a breakout session where you can brainstorm with your partner on all the things you need to do, all the tasks, like just start a list of all the crap you have to do to run your business. And then I want you to see if you can take time to put them into buckets. If you can create five buckets, that's awesome. And what we'll do, um, uh, Kajia, is maybe do two people per room. I don't know how many people we have on right now, but maybe do two people per room. And I'm going to give you five minutes to actually just jump into it. And uh, five minutes tops, just write a quick little thing. So we'll do some breakouts right okay. now. Yeah. So uh, we're going to break out, hopefully. And uh, jump into your room when it's there. And because we're at 42 minutes, so we're going to do five minutes and then we'll have a wrap and then we'll do questions. If you don't have a room, just reach out to us and we'll put you in a room. See if Larry or if anybody's there, maybe they're not there. Christelle. Can you find a breakout room, Larry? Yeah, I did um, assign everyone. So I think they're still finding how to join. Perfect. Very cool. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. We just have Allison and Christelle. Let me see. There you go. Excellent. Yeah, there's so many things that it takes to do to run a business, as you know. <laughs> you know, have all the little business tasks. It's like, what what do I have to do? What do I want to do? Right? What do I hate doing? Exactly. Can you find your room, John? Uh yeah, I did. I was just sitting there by myself. So, oh, oh, okay. pop oh let me just uh, join you here in room nine. Sorry about that. Perfect. One all is good. One is a lonely number. <laughs> ain't it? Ain't it? <laughs> I want to sing that song. Allison, is let me see. Allison hasn't. Okay. So do you have a room, Allison? And she does have a room. It's room three. And her partner is all alone there. Maybe we, can, maybe we can move Tara. I believe Allison is not present. The girl. And yeah, maybe you can scoot him over. Maybe yeah, Allison is there, but not there. All right, I'll just move her to room four. So some rooms have two to three people. Perfect. All right. They're all set in their room. Oh, good. Excellent. Thank you. 
Yeah, I didn't. Handling breakout rooms is something that I didn't want to deal with right now. <laughs> Are you uh, planning to get into the rooms or just wait on um, them till they finish? No, nah, we'll just give them a little countdown and then I'll have them come back and ask them what happened. It's so funny because I thought I was at 53 minutes, but I see I'm only at 4 35. So I was starting to say, oh no. Oh, you're doing fine. I think Perfect. um my intro is uh usually just short, so um that allows speakers to have more time with their talk. I love just it. Have, uh, Christelle, are you time. able Christelle, did you find a room or were you by yourself? Yes, I did. But I couldn't be in, in video, so I can't. Sorry. Oh, but that's okay. But you are, were you in your breakout room? Were you able to talk to your people? Yes. It was just someone there. Just one. Were you able to make a list of all the stuff you have to do? Oh, no. Business? No, sorry. That's okay. What kind of business are you in? Uh, I have a staffing agency, and then um, I host uh, like international business, um, uh, international business networking event. Oh, awesome, awesome! So you have a lot of things to do. Have you ever made a list of everything that you have to do for your business? And kind of chunked it into that's what we were doing in the breakout is trying to make a list of everything Christelle has to do in order to run her business. Um, I mean, I have uh, I have some um, ideas about that, mm -hmm. but I don't have a list. Okay. I don't have a list. Well, the idea is if you have a list, you'll know what you have to do, and then you can okay. put it in separate little chunks of, of like with like tasks. You know, like you have to do accounting, you have to do... V, you know, meet with your VAs, you have to do, you know, what is all the stuff that you have to do every week, week in and week out? That's where I'm heading with this is if you can wow, make okay. this, it will help you kind of really decipher how you can put like with like activities together, which is going to save you a lot of time. Okay. Yes. Okay. I can start. I can start to do at least right now. So. Okay. Um, yes thank you absolutely you can go back to your room or you're probably left someone lonely there yes he was there but he told me that he's not sure that um i can stay without the video so it's why i left oh yeah you can stay without the video because you can talk talking is the main thing not really seeing each other yes okay i can go back okay Oh, thank you. Sure. I don't know how much time we have left, Kasia. I believe you still have like 22 minutes. Oh, good. Okay. It'll give her time to do some stuff. It's always kind of overwhelming to see everything you have to do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I also like to like write down my task and just the dopamine boost of like checking the task that you've done. And, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. <laughs> love it. What kind of a list list uh, thing do you make? Do you use paper? Do you use an app? Oh, I, <clears throat> I just use the reminder list or an a notepad on my phone ah. i'm not a very like paper and pen kind of girl because i often lose it yeah yeah well it's good anyhow it's it's good for us to have it digital because we always have our phone yeah we that's true. Our phone. yeah it hey Russ, are you just joining us or did you get bounced out of a room maybe he's just joining us oh yeah okay Hey, Russ, can you hear us? Oh, um, his audio is not yet connected. Maybe he's just joining. Okay. That's cool. 
Uh, let me message him to connect his audio. Okay, oh. your mic is over. That's okay. Uh oh. A lot of people are having audio challenges. Oh, did he go into a breakout room or did he just leave? No, I think he's gone. Okay. He went out. Maybe he tried leaving. Maybe try joining again. Yeah, he could try coming back in. Hi, Libby. Hey, Libby. Are we back from breakout? Is it time? Maybe Libby's just now joining us. Oh no, she's here. Yeah, I believe uh, she was the one has she also has a problem with her mic. Oh, okay, okay, Libby. Sorry about that, but we'll be back. We'll we'll end our breakout session here soon, and then you can listen more. Kaji and I were talking about lists, like how do we do our task lists? You know, whether it's digital or paper. Yeah. But the main about, thing is yeah. checking them off, checking those tasks off the list. That's a huge reward. It feels yeah. good. You're right about the dopamine. How about you, Kathy? Do you prefer the paper and pen? Um, I actually have, yeah, I have I prefer paper and pen uh myself, but I use just one piece a day and then I can check it off. Wow. Um, for me, I'm a tactile learner, so paper really works for me. But again, I have this small pad and I tear off the page immediately and Lots start. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just way too overwhelming. Fresh task every day. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, like when tasks pile up from uh, yesterday, it's like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> Yeah. So then you just move it to the next day. I also had a program that I loved called do it tomorrow, but they changed, it was a phone app. And, and if I, I didn't cross it off, it would go to tomorrow. And when I crossed it off, it went and actually crossed it off. And it was like handwriting for me, it worked really, really well, but they changed the stupid app. And so I had to go back to paper. It was a great app. The audio, it's like an ASMR of scratching your task <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool we should be done at five minutes shouldn't we yeah it's up to you yeah let's break it out let's All stop right. okay so we'll close it all now yep okay close our room so it'll give them about 60 seconds to go back excellent Oh, that's kind of cool that we see the breakout who's with who. Yeah, we do. A shot of that. We had nine rooms. Mm -hmm. quite a, there's quite a number of us. Like, Ooh, we have people coming back. Excellent. Welcome back. I'm very curious. Did anybody go into overwhelm? Or did it just feel good to write down everything that you have to do to run your business? <laughs> that's that's the question. Um, did anybody have any aha moments? I don't know if everybody's back here yet, but we can start talking for who's ever here. You can unmute yourself and anybody have a, a big like, oh my gosh kind of thing when you're writing down your tasks? I think just um, looking at the big picture, what your goals are, and then breaking it down into the, the steps and what that fits into. Does that fit into a min? Does that fit into this? Does that fit into that? 
Oh, excellent. Okay. So you took your big picture goal and tried to put it into buckets. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome too. Yeah. Um, something that you want to probably do, uh, eventually is look at everything that you have to do to run your business. And it can seem a little bit overwhelming, but then once you, you'll start seeing how things are very similar act, types of activities. And that way you can create those umbrellas of intention for each day of the week. That'll help you a lot. But I also absolutely uh, honor and always do your big projects into those little buckets of chunks of the stuff too. Um, that's something that's really critical. So good work on that. Um, how about you, John? Were you able to, to see anything that had like, did it light you up in any way? Um, yeah, to be perfectly honest, it when you write it all down, right, and you start breaking it up into smaller categories, it just seems a lot more manageable. I think sometimes um, I'm a little guilty of getting overwhelmed on, on a Monday morning when, especially when I haven't done a good job of planning my week and I'm looking at, you know, a post-it note on my desk with you know, five, five different tasks that I have to do, right? Um, so I definitely like handwriting. It's a good memory trick for me. Uh, I think the organizational aspect of that was something I need to work on clearly just by uh, how much this exercise was beneficial. So uh, definitely a great exercise. Yeah, oh, thanks. excellent. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I didn't want you to go into overwhelm when you were doing this, but when I write down all this stuff, when I, when I originally wrote down everything it took for me to write my, to do my business, I went, Oh my gosh, this is so much stuff. But then when I started chunking them into different types of things and having that intention for each day, uh, it was better, <laughs> but I love the fact, John, that, that it felt good for you, uh, for sure. And, you know, and, and the sticky notes, you know, you can also just do a sticky note for project, a sticky note for calls, a stick, you know, if you have to go there. <laughs> but uh, Kazi and I were talking about in, in break, like, how do we keep track of our tasks? But that's a whole different topic. Does anybody else have any aha moments or any questions about that or anything, any concerns on what happened? No, we're good. I think, um, one one of the things that happens with small business and and uh, I was talking to my partner there and we get business through referral and stuff so we also drop sometimes the ball on on things we should be doing like long term marketing and some of that stuff because we're just busy and in production mode and that that always seems like important and urgent so it always like to, tomorrow I have four meetings with big construction teams so I have to take documentation I have to make sure my computer works on the HMDMI like. Like I have so many things I have to do to get ready for that, that today ends up being get ready day. And I, that's all I can think about. And I can't really do any long-term stuff because I'm busy getting ready for production. So I think, I think, cause I'm, I'm fundamentally a production guy, not a sales marketing person. So that, that stuff just always bumps everything else. And so it's just a matter of, like you say, putting some stuff in buckets and understand I have to invest in the future. I cannot just be, day to day or I, it will hurt me in six weeks or eight weeks. Yeah. You know, that's a really good insight. And that's the entrepreneurial thing that we do. We're like, we're so busy and we get, you know, we have this flood of business. We have this flood of money coming in and then we're like immersed in that. And then we forget that we have to market for the future. <laughs> That's why I like to have a marketing day, you know, and then, and then, then the, then the, you know, you're done with the contracts and then you're like, oh my God, I don't have any business. You know, it's like, woo, 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 woo that we do as entrepreneurs. So uh, that's why I absolutely have to have my marketing day once a week. I have to just keep on it no matter how busy I am and how many, you know, clients are intercepting. And, and I have to have my project day so I can actually do what I promised the clients I was going to do in between sessions. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, it was kind of interesting. And I'm, I really appreciate you guys playing full out on this because it's so critical uh, to kind of see where you are with stuff. Um, you know, you got to get rid of the busyness. Busyness is when you're just doing a bunch of stuff to do a bunch of stuff and you're not really focusing on what you should be doing at that point in time. And it's a common habit. If you don't specify or map out in advance what you're going to do, uh, I'm a case in point. I, you know, busy, I'm busy, you know, I'm too busy. Well, I'm not really getting down to business. 
I'm doing like the nitpicky stuff because that's the easy stuff, the low hanging branch off the tree, right? So if you want to increase your cash flow, you know, you have to get rid of that busy kind of thing. And having a daily umbrella of intention will help you also put your creative spark front and center. I know that a lot of people that I work with, they've just lost their juice. They've lost their mojo because they're just exhausted and they haven't really had time to catch up. They haven't figured out what they should be outsourcing. They don't have systems built in to support themselves. They're just like running and running and running and never catching up. So if you have your, uh, your daily intention umbrella, then your creative sparks can flow because you know things are not gonna fall through the cracks because you have the intention of what's gonna follow up the next day and the next day and the next day. And you'll stop having that running list of mental crap that you have to do in your brain. That mental brain task load, you know, we all have it. If, if it's not out in paper or out in a document, it takes up hard drive space in your brain. And then you're not able to be creative, right? So you have to, you know, protect your brain because we, we have only just a limited amount of capacity in our brain. This is the thing. You set your intention, you have a plan, but you never know when it's going to rain. Just like you said, Jerry, you're never going to know, oh, now they're changing what I have to do tomorrow for this big gig. And now I have to drop everything, right? And this thing's happened. This is what happens to us entrepreneurs. But if we know what we should have been doing the day that it rains, we know what you, we didn't do so we can come back around to it. That's the magic because it's never going to be perfect. But again, say this again, if you know what you are supposed to do, you know what you didn't do. That's the kicker right there. And if you know what you didn't do, you can get back to it after the thunderstorm. <laughs> I'll tell you about my client, Elise, and I, I love this woman because she, a lot of my entrepreneurial clients have more than one gig. She was a stylist. She was also a property manager. She had several properties that she was renting out and she was also styling clients. And when she hired me, she hired me because she didn't have a life. She couldn't figure out how to balance her work-life balance. She worked every weekend. She had no time for friends. She could never see girlfriends because she just was always busy. So what we did was, you know, after working together for a while, we figured, oh, we can do everything that it has to do to manage those properties in one day. What day should that happen? For her, it should happen on a Monday because that way that stuff's knocked out. And then, oh, when am I going to see clients? Well, I can see clients Tuesday through Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is going to be my style client days. And that worked for her because we figured out how many hours it took to see a client, how many clients she, how many clients does she want? How long does each client take? Blah, 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 right? Then Friday was going to be her admin get organized day and set up her time for next week on everything that she had to do the following week. And then Saturday and Sunday, she could take off. Woo, this was huge for her. She never had Saturday off ever before we met and started working together. But here's the thing. Things are never perfect. I see her at an event at a little dinner a few weeks later. And she goes, this schedule is working fantastic. But oh my gosh, my, my husband's client, uh, my client's husband wants to see me and have him do style, but he can only see me on Saturdays. What am I, what's a girl to do? So I figured out this, what I'm going to do. And I have these clients that happen every once in a while. I'm going to see him on Saturday, the first Saturday of the month. And guess what, Kath? The first Saturday of every month from nine to noon, I'm going to see those straggly clients. And in order to reward myself, that same first Saturday every month at one o'clock is brunch with girlfriends. Woo -woo. So now... I get to work one Saturday a month. If someone has to fit into a Saturday, I know right where to put them. And I celebrate that. And now I always have at least one Saturday a month where I'm hanging out with my girlfriends. And it's going to be brunch on that same day as a reward. And I'm like, that is so cool. That's so inventive. And this is Elisa's week. She now has nothing left undone. She has all of her tasks taken care of because she did the wrap on Fridays, right? And she sees that one Saturday she works and she doesn't mind now because now she can fit those people in and they don't screw up the rest of her week. And she found that separating her jobs into days of the week gave her more time off. And now she takes every weekend off without guilt. And her clients are served. She doesn't feel like she's underserving them. And you know, the best sign of professionalism, I learned this way early in my career when I had a publishing agency, 
is knowing when to say how to say no. Someone wants to encroach on a Friday, she'll say, I'm sorry, I can't. That's when I'm actually doing some big brain stuff. I can see you on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or this Saturday, right? And that's being very professional. And now her clients are complying and they're, you know, even if they have to go, she goes, sometimes my clients are like six weeks out because that's the only Wednesday I have. And that's the only day they can do it is Wednesday, but they all wait for her. And now she's happy and prosperous and fulfilled and actually having a life. Who here wants to have a life besides just being married to your business full time? Who wants to take every weekend off? Raise your hand for that. Yeah, I say yes to that. <laughs> so when it comes to chasing squirrels, if you have a plan, you're going to be aware when you're jumping onto a branch of something that you shouldn't be jumping off on. Okay, you're going to know is that branch is not on my agenda and you're just going to say no. Now, I know that each and every one of you wants to be more efficient than the squirrels. Now that's a hard bill. That's 40, they're 40% 40 effective. Actually, they're 60% effective. They only lose 40% of their nuts. The so 60% of the stuff they do is making a difference. For us, we're at 20. That's the average for entrepreneurial success is 20%. So we want to get to be a little bit more. And when you eliminate the clutter in your environment, you're more clear-minded, which helps you identify what should be done in your business and helps you know what's working and what's not working. So planning ahead also gives you clarity and gives you focus. When, it, when you ignite your focus, it helps you realize that 80% of our days are dominated by work about work, right? They're skilled and only 20% are strategy. So we want to spend more than 20% of our time doing that skilled work and strategy because that's where we make the cash. That's where we make the cash. The 80% of the busyness is not where we make the cash. And when you plan ahead, you'll know to see what clearly you should not be doing. That's the most important thing. You know what you shouldn't be doing if you're on task. <laughs> Helps me a lot. So today I know you've learned how to eliminate your distractions with a clean environment or why it's important to do it. Uh, you know how the unique your desktop needs to be open for business. You can also understand how chasing squirrels impedes your focus. And when you implement only one of these three things, you're going to be able to increase your productivity level to over that 20%. You're going to feel more in control. You're going to reduce overworking because you're going to get more done in less time. And you're going to strive towards perfection, you know, and life's never perfect, right? But let's be honest, whose is, right? But if you know, again, what you shouldn't be doing, what you should be doing, you know what you shouldn't be doing. It also reduces the amount of time that you spend on meaningless tasks. And it's a high impact way to help yourself feel better and happier. You're less likely to miss that important appointment. You're less likely to beat yourself up on things left undone, right? You're able to find that template that you know you have that you can't find. So it's a lot of information I've shared with you. And the little girl in me who loves squirrels and who loves cookies, it just it breaks my heart when I know that I see people that I can help, but I but they just can't see clearly what they should be doing. And so I'd like you to stop right now and just take a breath in. You've done a lot of work. You've done a lot of work today and breathe out and say, OK. I know now what I can do after I leave this session to maybe make my life a little bit easier and how to move the needle, because we don't know what we don't know, right? And when I sit down with a client, I can see within three or four minutes, when I observe what's going on in their business, I can immediately say, if you just do this one thing, you're going to increase your bottom line. If you just eliminate this one thing or do this one thing, you, you will make more money and bring in more revenue and be less stressed. And, you know, we want to reclaim our day every day. We want to claim our day, own our day and get things done. And, you know, I feel incredibly blessed to do what I do for a living. It took me 13 careers to figure it out. I'm now on purpose, <laughs> but I know that what I do makes a difference for people. And I feel blessed. It makes waking up worth living. I believe truly that our reality is created by our thoughts. And when our thoughts become jumbled and our environment and our schedule is hectic, we're unable to create the reality that we want within our business. And I believe also that our creative impulse comes from the inside out. And I see a lot of systems that are, you know, organizing systems that are cramped, trying to get crammed into clients, 
that aren't really about the way they think. And so many organizing systems are cookie cutter. And I think that's probably why I love peanut butter cookies because there is no mold and you can actually change the recipe pretty easy. And I create systems that are born to help you work for you and your creative impulse, right? The drudgy stuff of getting organized, not getting organized when it's created for you, when you have a system that actually works for you and is created for you, because let's face it, no one wants to get organized. We all want to be organized. And when you have systems running in the background of your business that support you, you are organized, but you're not spending forever getting organized. Because unless you're weird like me, no one wants to do it. So back to cookies. To sum it up, it takes three steps to make a cookie. You have to figure out what recipe you want to follow. You have to gather up the ingredients. Then you have to find the ingredient, combine the ingredients. But here's the sticky part. You supposed to bake it for five minutes, whatever, eight minutes to 350, but everybody's oven is different. You know, maybe three, but like my oven runs hot. So if someone tells me to bake something for 10 minutes, I'm going to bake it for eight. So every oven is a little bit different and every environment is different when you're putting the ingredients together. And I find the same thing when I work with clients, everybody has different skill sets and sometimes People don't want to bake the cookies alone. Like they want someone to kind of lead the way and shine the light and say, no, I know, you know, that even though it says 10 minutes, you really only need eight. I can see your cookies are getting done. So I have an amazing opportunity today for everyone in the room. And if this has really touched you, and if you feel like I've helped you and you're saying, oh my gosh, this person is talking about what I really need to hear, then I've got an opportunity for us to take this further, take it deeper and to really personalize it. As I promised you, I have, I have gifts for every single one and there's no catch, there's no, no catch attached. But being organized isn't just for Marie Kondo, you guys. Everybody know who Marie Kondo is? Yeah, some people do. Marie Kondo is a little tidying up girl that rolls everything into circles. Um, you know, with the simple with few little tweaks, everyone can get organized. And doing this crushes your overwhelm and puts you in charge of your business. We all wanna be in charge of our business. We don't want our busyness to be in charge of us, right? So an hour is not very long. We've all, you know, learned a lot. Um, thank you, Freeborn. I really appreciate it. And you might still have questions. You might say, is this going to work for me? Can I implement it quickly? Hold on one minute, Freeborn. I'm going to give you a scan that you can take. I'd love to help at, at, help you. And at this point, I'd just like to ask your permission to give you a couple things. Is that okay with everybody? Not charging for this. It's all free. Here's a QR code. I've, I have an amazing resource and it's my ultimate productivity checklist. It's valued at 97 bucks, but it's complimentary for each and every one of you. You can scan the QR code or you can use the, the link to download it. And it's it, the checklist has the simplest and most effective things that you can do to increase your cash flow. And in a few short minutes, you can see by looking at this checklist, what's the quickest way you can turn your chaos into cash? What's the number one thing you can do right now to do it? And if you implement only one of those strategies, the bottom line, your bottom line will benefit. So if you'd like a free copy, go ahead and scan the QR code and, um, and see what you got there. And then as a huge bonus for staying with me to the end, I have space in my schedule for six of you to get a free chaos to cash breakthrough session. And I only have six spots because actually I'm on the road. I'm as of next week, I'm traveling all of September speaking. So I don't have a lot of time, but if you want to, you know, six of you can get free chaos to cash trainings and I'll help per you personally one-on-one -on -one, turn your chaos into cash. And, you know, I can tell within a few minutes, what's the one thing you should implement. And my goal within this session is to kind of fine tune right in as an objective observer and say, this is what you can do. This is what you can do right now to get rid of your chaos and to turn your bottom line profit into making more cash. So I know a lot of you might be saying, well, this is really going to help me and go to the link and make the decision. And I'll tell you, Yes, a resounding yes, because I this ain't my first rodeo. I've been doing this 18 years. In 30 minutes, I'll help you laser focus on the most important step you should be taking right now to make more money and be less stressed. Each of these sessions are valued at $497, but I have six open right now for 30 minutes, a breakthrough session for you. And my goal, again, is always to turn your chaos into cash. 
So you can scan the code. You can go to chatwithkathy.com. If you're listening and can't see, it's K-A-T-H-I, chatwithkathy.com. Or you can scan the QR code and you'll see there's six sessions open and you can go ahead and, and do that. Um, you know, my goal is just to help you and there's nothing to sell here. It's just to see, hey, can I reach out? Can I help you get some clarity on your situation? That's what it's all about. So I'll leave you with this. My only wish is for you to make a commitment to yourself, to your family, make a decision to do whatever it takes to start making the difference that you want to make in the world. The reason we're entrepreneurs is we have a gift to give, right? And my goal is to help you give that gift with less stress. Because guess what? The highways are paved with dead squirrels who couldn't make a decision. It's true. And if you need help with your business, whether it's with me or not, the main thing is make a decision and make a choice to get the results that you want to make in your life and in your business. So you can go to chatwithkathy.com, scan the QR code. And now I'm a little bit late, but we're going to open up for questions. Yay. So if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to jump right in. Yes, Leanne. Um, so I have a high maintenance client that always calls me last minute with uh, something to do that he needs urgently. Um, how do I handle that in my scheduling? Yeah, so you have to train your clients. So it takes about, it's going to take a few times of repetitive talking to this client saying that, you know, I just can't drop this right now for this fire. I know it's very important to you, but I've set aside time specifically for you to work on your project on this time. And they'll say, but I have a fire. And you'll say, and you'll try to help them, but you'll keep going back to, I've set aside this day to work on your project. And I can be way more effective for you and every one of my clients if I can stick to my schedule. So they're going to think that they are the most important thing since sliced bread. And you're going to have to probably you know, jump a few hoops for them, but keep going back to in order to serve my clients more purposefully, in order for me to there, be there more genuinely for you, let's set aside this time to work on that. I have this time earmark for you already, Jim, you know, so can we, can we do that? Yeah. Is there something I can provide for you right now that can help you move the needle? And then when we get back to our real session, I'll really be able to laser focus in on what you need. Because right now, quite honestly, Jim, I'm a little bit distracted. I'm working on Melissa's client. I'm working on this. I'm working on this, right? You are very important to me. You're very important to me. But I'll be able to serve you much better and help you much more if we agree, if we keep to our allocated time. Something like that. When I work in corporate environments all the time, I, I have uh, them agree to allow a signature line be happening. And the signature line goes like this in, in their emails. In order to serve my clients more effectively, I am responding to emails only once a day. If this is an emergency, you can chat or Skype me. But meanwhile, I'll get back with you within 24 hours. And when I have this shift, I did that for Ohio Masonic Home for all five of their campuses the marketing department's productivity just skyrocketed and clients were less ticked off. Actually, they, they had a higher percentage of happiness with client factors after they did that because then the client knew that they're not going to just be jumping like that. And the marketing people knew that they weren't going to drop things that they were working on, right, for the client. So just be gentle. And again, you have to groom them into knowing that this is a time that I work for you, Jim. This is your time. I'm dedicated solely to you during this time. And jumping into this fire with you is not going to help me or help you. Help okay. you or is that a way to say it? Okay. Now, yeah. Did that help? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, clients always have fires. <laughs> that That's the unexpected. Who else has a question? That was a great question. And that happens all the time with all of us as entrepreneurs. I can't see, oh, uh, Alina. So I, I'm a one woman show and I have I have different deadlines with different clients. I'm a photographer. So some clients uh, need the very quick turnaround and they need the photos done tomorrow. Others have, you know, a month. So I'm just wondering how I can manage these expectations and these commitments 
while implementing the system that you were talking about? Yeah, well, whenever you onboard the client, you find out what their deadline is. Thanks, Tamara. I appreciate your time. Um, yeah, so when you know, you need to know in advance what they want from you, right? And then you will pocket them into the times that work. Okay, so so maybe Alina, you know, you have this new client and they're like, well, this is a, a tight turnaround time. You'll say, oh, the tight turnaround times, I can do it on this day. And, you know, maybe it's whatever, a wedding or something that you can't, you know, control. But, but if you have your intention in advance, then you can kind of put your people into the pockets of time that you've already allocated. Does that help? I don't think that works because no, well, I don't think it works in my in my uh, line of work just because the uh, you know the events that I shoot they happen at different times uh, of the day they happen on different days of the week and then some clients need those images done right away others don't so I'm just trying to figure out how I can have for example, an editing day, if, you know, with these different expectations. Right, right. Like well, I'll yeah, schedule yeah. the events, right? Because I don't. Yeah, you don't schedule the events. You just show up. Yeah. So what might work for you very, very well is to do four hour blocks of time on each of those days that you're going to have to be doing stuff. Because because each event's not going to take the whole entire day, right? No. So let's let's set up for you, what I would say is let's do four hour chunks of things, a four hour editing chunk, a four hour running the business chunk, a four hour marketing chunk, and then try to fit those chunks in between your jigsaw puzzle of everybody's event schedule. Because four hours is magic. I've after all after all these years, I know the four hour block is huge. So maybe you can scoot in four hours for admin like so again you're planning your week in advance so you know before next week happens probably what's going to happen right so then you're going to take you're going to chunk all the you're going to have set up all the things you need to do to run your business put them into buckets and then you're going to pop a bucket in here or there willy-nilly in between all of your client commitments and engagements so yours is a little bit of a different thing but again, you need to bucket those things that you have to do to run your business, especially as a one girl show, you're doing a lot of stuff. So create those buckets for yourself and make them a four hour bucket and then pop them in next week. Look at next week and say, okay, this is going to be my admin chunk. This is going to be my marketing chunk. I can fit it in here. I can fit it in there, right? And maybe you never see anybody on Sundays because there's no event. That might end up being not your day off. Your day off might end up being a Monday, you know, because Sunday is the one day where people aren't going to be bugging you for stuff. So think think about that and think about next week and, you know, how you're going to chunk in the running of your business in between all your client deadlines. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea because I was thinking of creating this kind of a more of a rigid schedule where Monday is this day, Tuesday is that day, but having it a bit more flexible is actually really good. Thank you. Yeah, and actually Monday could be the day where you do all your admin, but maybe it's not going to be the eight to noon because you have to shoot somebody. It's going to be that afternoon. Yeah, so you yeah. have that overall intention umbrella of each day of what you're going to, where you're going, what, what four hour task are you going to put into there? What four hour type of thing are you going to put in there? That's going to help you enormously get stuff done, but it's going to float for you because your clients are floating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who else has a question? You can just uh, unmute and ask because I can't see a lot of people. Kathy? Yes. Hey, Jerry. Um, just, just to sort of sort of summarize, you've you know, you talked about a lot of stuff. You've given us a lot of things to think about. Um, and maybe it's just sort of a rhetoric comment, not a question. But what you're really suggesting is we we do more deeper work in more chunks and get rid of said noise. And then it's up to us to decide where that is. Um, and then we have to manage, you know, like I have to manage staff that are bothering me all the time. I have to manage, you know, 
peeking at my email, which I ought not to do. And so really you're, you're just getting us to focus on deep work versus the busy work. Is that accurate reflection? Yeah. Yeah, what well, and and become aware of what's the busy work. You know, like never go to your inbox first thing in the morning. That's busy work because guess what? The inbox is a call to action. An inbox will put you right into reaction mode. There's nothing that anybody sends you that everything someone sends you, they want you to do something. <laughs> so if you go to your inbox first thing in the morning, you're gonna be flying off trying to deal with people what they want you to do and not doing what you need to do for that day. So yeah, but that's a good summary, Jerry, for sure. It's like be intentional of what you want to be doing that day. Have an intention in advance and it, it'll be must, you'll still get sidetracked. You'll still get knocked off. You'll still jump onto another branch, but you'll know the branch you're supposed to be coming back to. So yeah, great summary. Appreciate that. That's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody else have a question? I have another question. Uh, if you have any tips on managing distractions, like Jerry said, you know, you you're doing something and then something pings and, you know, your kids chime up, whatever. How do you, you know, obviously you can't just sit and work for four hours straight, right? How sure do you, you sure you can. Can. <laughs> I do all the time. So I, so there's a, but you know, you have, there's a bunch of questions within your question. First off, turn off your daggone binger. Turn off those notifications. Do not even have bingers binging at you. Like, forget about it. No, do not do that. If you're in this four hour big planning thing, turn off your phone, you know, turn off messenger for God's sake. You know, you're not going to be able to think when you have all these bingers and bells and whistles wh whistling doing it. Now, if you have kids, you train your kids that mama's in work and you shut the door and you say, do not disturb. And it, they'll keep disturbing depending on their age, but eventually they'll get it. Um, I have one of my moms who still works in her kitchen little cubby thing. And she has a flag now that we raise. We raise the flag when she's in deep thought and the kids see the flag raise, they know that they're not supposed to jump in and and uh, intervene. Uh, four hours does seem like a lot of time, Jerry, but that is when you get a lot of stuff done. If you want to knock off that big project, you can do that. It, 90 minute windows, you know, whatever floats your boat, you know, the Pomerado technique, if you need 90 minutes and you need to get up and move around and do a 10 minute break, then go back. Perfect. Oh, good. We have three minutes left for Q&A. Thank you. Thanks for keeping me on task. Love Kajia. Let's give Kajia a hand. She's like rocking this, uh, keeping me on task and love it. Woo. Okay. Uh, did that help, Alina? I mean, I know there's so many different distractions that can happen when you're a single mom running your own business with kids. Or maybe not a single mom, but a sole proprietor running a business with kids. There's a lot, but you have to train these people. You have to train people that it's not your fire, that it's there. You kind of point back. That's that might be something your fire. That might be your fire. Uh, do you really want me to extinguish that for you? Is that going to help you? You're going to say something, Jerry. I can tell. Yeah, just Alina was in my group. We were together, and um, an observation Alina made. I could see your son walking in the background. He's wearing a red shirt. So even though you're blurred out, I can see it. But you, one of the things you did, Lena, you paused and you you apologized, which you didn't need to know. I already knew he was there. I could see him, you know, walking around. So my 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 thought, Alina, is you know you kind of broke your attention to to service me, which you didn't you didn't need to do. So I I was quite focused on helping you. Our conversation was really very good so i think sometimes we do stuff for someone else kathy which we we don't need to do like just everyone's in the same boat they got stuff all over just let's stay focused plow ahead be courteous and nice but we don't need to 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 inner you know say stop because that chain breaks the mental focus and then 20 minutes before you're back engaged so i just share that with you for what it's worth mm -hmm. thank you that's a good tip it's a good observation too. I mean, anytime you change task, it's about 17 minutes to get back on task. That's why I like the four hour block because I don't want to waste 17 minutes each time I switch focus. I just don't. I just want to barrel through and get that crap done. You know, <laughs> that's the way I am, but I'm a, I'm a racehorse, right? Um, 
So yeah, that I, so hopefully that helps. And, you know, Alina too, if you have an office that you can make for yourself or a space that you can make for yourself, that would be helpful as well for you. Um, for sure. And, and, you know, it might be carving out a closet that you turn into an office. I've done that several times. I, during COVID, I had a school teacher and she hired me because she was teaching school and, and her little kid goes streaking naked behind her in the middle of class. Yeah. And she's like, I don't, I got to do something. So we found a shed in the backyard and we converted it into her school room, her classroom. We put an air conditioner window shaker in there. We cleaned it all out. We put up her desk. We set her all up for business. And actually, I think she's still there. I don't think she wants to leave. <laughs> so there's always a solution. But yeah, the little kid's streaking with something. That's COVID for you, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, how are we doing, Kashi? Are we ready to do the gratitude? So, well, this yeah. Is questions. Definitely. So, um, so if for those who have any more questions for Kathy, uh, you can reach her out with uh, to chat with Kathy.com. Is that right? Yeah. If for you go to chat with, there's probably only six spots. I don't know if any, anything's left. If you, if you don't get in for the free session, you can go to Kathy at organized and energized.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kathy. Yeah, I'll put that in chat too. In case you didn't awesome. get that session, you can always reach out to me. We really appreciate your talk and for answering our questions. It really helps us to set our priorities straight. So we have now reached to the gratitude circle. And um, for those who would like to share their takeaways or their uh, appreciation with our speaker for today, Please uh, un unmute yourself or raise your hand and we'd love to hear it. So for me personally, what I appreciated with your talk, Kathy, is uh, how you uh, emphasize what we should be doing and should not be doing. Because sometimes, you know, the things that we should not be doing gets in the way and it really clutters everything else that we have to do. So. Keep the priorities straight and get that list uh, in writing so that you know what to do. I like that part. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. I love this. Thank you very much, Kathy. Um, this was very timely. I was trying to figure out how to get myself organized, and your system is definitely going to help me, um, especially breaking down, okay, this is what I have to do every week to to keep my business going. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so happy. Perfect timing, divine timing. Yeah. I'm just going to chime in as well. I like that you um, suggest giving um, your tasks a larger chunk of time, like a four hour chunk of time to do a deep dive on a specific part of your business. I think that's a really I can see that being a very productive way for me personally, because I find that I normally try to tackle everything in one day. And then I always feel like I just have so much work to do. I'm never done. And, and there's just always more, but I feel like having like a four hour, you know, strategy session or marketing session um, or research uh, time that will really help to start a project and finish it like I can see myself planning some marketing material in four hours and then finishing it thank you and you know what's cool about that say you know you're going to do marketing on Thursday all throughout the week you're going to come up with little things that you could add onto that list and then you'll and but you won't do them but you'll think of them right because you know it's coming up then you can just start that little marketing list when you get to that day or that chunk of time you're like yeah so you can capture those ideas into that chunk. Right? Yes. Instead of writing it willy nilly, you'd write it on your marketing day list. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm excited. I'm going to be so organized. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You're going to get organized and be organized, Elena. We're rooting for you. Uh, thanks. I'm rooting for everyone too. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anybody else? We have some chat messages here from Allison as well. Thank you. So if there's uh, 
Uh, anybody else who would like to, if there's nobody else who would like to share, uh, once again, I would like to thank Kathy for giving us and sharing with us your insight and contributing to a, a lot of things to help us be organized and be successful in what we do. And also for everyone, thank you so much for showing up at today's event. Our next event is going to be on September 5th, 2020. 23 at 9 a.m. Pacific. And we are going to have Karen Bonnet and Natraj talking about how to live the life that awaits you. So to sign up for that, you can go to this URL that I will put in the chat box. And once more, thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate you being here and we will see you on the next event. Take care. Yeah, and make sure to see Karen. She's my colleague. She will give a great presentation. So you'll you'll learn a lot with Karen. And thank you all so much. It's so nice to meet you and get to know you. Uh, reach out to me if you need anything. I'm here. I'm here to help. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everyone. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye.